Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Perfect Pyramid Series with Charles and myself here at welcome MLM back. City. Yeah, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are excited about the topic of today, aren't we? Very excited. It's going to be pulling up my notes right now. We're getting ready to rock and roll. Yeah, and definitely grab a piece of paper and a pen. You might want to write this formula down that we're about to share with you today. So, yup, yup. All right, all right. So, let me go ahead and put this on. So, today's topic is the perfect ownership formula you must use in your recruiting process. And before we jump into it, we want to just ask you if you guys have any fun plans for Labor Day weekend. Labor Day, Labor Day coming up. Oh, Shelly's saying we're excited to see you both. Yay. Oh, good to see you, Shelly. Thank you for jumping on. Three day weekend, Shelly. You got anything planned? Oh, well. Do we have anything planned? Because I think we already. This last weekend, we kind of we, went out already. We, we we took a quick getaway trip to beautiful Prescott. The weather was absolutely amazing. And we kind of uh, try and avoid crowded places in general. And we try to celebrate like a week ahead or a week after everyone celebrates. So we already took our little mini vacation. And um, yeah, as you're coming in, um, drop a hi, let us know where you're um, tuning in from and also let us know what fun plans you have for uh, this coming up weekend. And if you're catching the replay, just drop a hashtag replay and let's rock and roll. So today we're gonna learn about the perfect ownership formula that you must use in your recruiting process. And um, I think I want to give the lead to Charles. Sure. And you can just kind of give you a recap on what brought it. us here. So last couple shows. So the last two shows we talked about uh, two shows ago, how to take control of the conversation, right? A lot of people, one of the biggest things that we've been finding and as people answer the questions as they come into the group is how they want to feel like they're able to build their business without feeling like they're always selling everybody, right? right. And feeling salesy and like pitching everybody and feeling like a salesperson. So, Anyway, I think one of the things that people that we've noticed most is when people um, are asked about their company or about their product, one of the most common questions is like, so tell me about the product or what are you pitching, right? Like, what's your pitch? What's your, what product? What's, what are you selling? And the, 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 the automatic response is typically to start talking about the product, right? And start explaining right. what, answer their question, straightforward. But I think what you want to do is the best thing to do is answer their question with another question, you pivot, take control of the conversation by answering the question with a question. And, you know, a great one to kind of put them back on their heels and start building value, which is what we're going to talk about is, hey, I'll, I want to tell you all about the product, but are you sitting down? <laughs> right. And they're like, oh, no, I'm not sitting like, oh, well, I got some big news. I'm going to tell you all about it. Here, grab a seat. And they're like, oh, like over the phone or whatever. Right. And then you're like, but before I tell you about the product, mm -hmm. let me tell you about these owners. Right. Let me tell you about this other. We're going to talk about owners on ownership today, but I mean, there's other things you can build value in. But you pivot and you, now you're talking about something that you can't necessarily sell them. Right. You can't sell them owners. They can't buy owners. There's no commission on owners. There's no website to <laughs> sell them. And you know what I mean? An order, a pre order on an auto ship on owners. So, like, you're not selling now what you're really doing is building value. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of the main thing we talked about a couple of shows ago. And then when they ask about, so what's the, what's the product? And then, you know, last time, uh, last week we talked about one of the, as, as you're starting to build value for the owners and what's one of the main things to look out for um, in evaluating a company or in, as a person who's doing recruiting and building value and bringing people into your company, one thing you don't want to be doing and you want to look out for is, you want to look out for weaselly owners and you don't want to be one of those people that's weaselly roping people in feeling like you have to be misleading to bring people and you want to be straightforward. And that can maybe seem tricky. Like, well, how do I be straightforward with someone when I'm not just answering their question directly? Well, we want to answer their questions, but we want to be able to build value and control the conversation. And one of the best things you can build value in is like we mentioned is the ownership. So we're going to talk about that today on so, some things you can build value in. Absolutely. And hi, Priscilla. Hi, Tanya and uh, and Shelly uh, Montana weekend. Hope you had fun. Let's jump into the three keys 
three ways you can build value. And if you're taking notes, go ahead, start taking notes. Number one uh, is building value in their personal background, in their personal story, because that will give you insight into their, that will help your prospect gain insight into their character and values. Number two. Those are the two keys, their values and their character. Right. So, so number one key is their personal background. Number two key is their business background. And what does uh, revealing the business background and talking about that building value in that to your prospect what it does is that it reveals the owners business acumen their business experience and their mindset and attitude that they're bringing into uh, building this company right and then the last one the third thing is knowing or speaking and building value in their motivation meaning uh why are they building this company why what got these owners uh started into building this company what do they want to get out of it so those are the three key things that you want to build value when you're talking about the owners all right and i'll get to it in a little bit i want to share with you the formula um in a second before you so, share the formula i want to tell you a couple just a couple quick examples because it's like their personal background their values what like how do i build value in these things just to give you a couple examples the first company i was in um, well, the first company I was in only for like four months and I learned right away that I needed to have a mentor and that moved me into another company that I stayed with for nine years and really learned network marketing and, and the, had the bulk of my, my personal experience and really learning the business. It's like when you're a little kid, like your formative years, you know, right. uh, my formative years in the industry were with the company. And one of the biggest things that we promoted and built value for and really built the foundation of our businesses on was the integrity of the owners. We talked about their values and their integrity. And um, one of the quotes that, that I still remember, it rings true. I mean, I, I remember it. They said it at every single, we had conventions every four months. It was three months. It was crazy. Like four <laughs> times, you know, like looking back now, it was like crazy how he did it. But anyway, um, you know, they always said that this one, the president, he always said, you can't go home and beat the wife and kick the dog and expect to win big in network right. marketing. And what he meant by that was you can't be like two people, like a public person and a private person, be messed up in your private life and be like an awful person in your private life, but then try to act like you got it all together in your public life. It's about having authenticity and integrity and being, exactly. being, you know, congruent, coherent as, as a human. Right. And so, and, and, and the more I learned about those owners, the more I saw that they, they mean, they, they lived it. Like they were doing their personal development and, and they were Christians. Mm -hmm. They did their Bible study and whether that matters or not, but uh, they were, they, they tried to live it. And I found out things later on that I didn't like, but ultimately as we were building for nine years, that was, I mean, I built a group of 9,000 people in that company talking about the owner's values and what they valued in their integrity and, and how it, it, it leaked in a bleak. very difficult company. It was a diff it was a hard <laughs> it company. Was a it difficult. was a really tough build, but that was one of the key things that we talked about. And then right. just to give you like some juxtaposition to that, you know, my Dr. Yes and I, we founded a company. I'm um, just recently we're the two of us plus the owner of the third person, the founder, the three of us were the founders. We launched a company here in Arizona and we actually left that company just short of a year in because we found out things about the owner that were just, we were not in alignment with when it came to values and integrity. He was doing deals under the table, behind the scenes that we didn't approve of and cheating on his wife and all kinds of stuff that were like, there's no way we can build a business on integrity long-term when this and person, public personality, public personality, public personality and, and, and how he is on persona. stage versus who he was privately Are was not totally aligned. misaligned. So, so yeah, like, so that's something when you got something like that, you can build value in that's key. That's a huge thing. That's a huge selling point. And then to give you another quick example, we, we moved on that company I was with for nine years, built a team of over 9,000 people in the team. Um, I met Dr. Yes. I met my wife just as I was leaving that company and we both started with a new building, a brand new business, but we built a team of over 7,000 people there just in three years in that company. More like two years, no? Yeah, three well, years. yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, over three years, we really only worked it for like a year, year and a half. But yeah. over three years that we were there, you know, we had a group, big group, and 
one of the biggest things that we promoted and talked about was the owner's experience. So that second key point she, 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 that Dr. Yes mentioned, mm -hmm. the business experience, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, their, their business experience. We talked about these owners had never failed in business. They're not going to fail now. Right. It was one of the biggest selling, selling points. points that attracted a lot of prospects uh, into enrolling with us yeah, because like, well. uh, because that building value and the casting vision in the ownership where you're not selling them anything. I haven't even told them about the products yet. <laughs> but yeah, people were getting hyped up, though, because, I mean, the mentality is now is like, well, this person's aligned with these caliber of people right. who aren't going to fail in business. That means this person's in a business like if they're not if they're not going to fail then they're going to succeed and if they're going to succeed then i want to be with them so that was something mm -hmm. that it was so easy for us to build value are in. you guys tracking are you um you know if something st stands out while we're sharing something with you please share it with us we'd love to hear your thoughts because we are not in the same room and yeah, yeah. we're not even in your mind and brain so if something shows up or if you agree with something or something really hit home for you just drop it here and we'd love to see that and uh share that with you so yeah, yeah. Keeps, so it gets us fired up so hey tanya good to see you Priscilla, you see, so so that was one key thing. We built value in the ownership in that respect to say, hey, look, these guys have this business experience that's mm -hmm. huge, that's key, one of the key ingredients to why we're gonna go be so successful. And then the third thing, the third key point that Dr. Yes made was the motivation, right? I think knowing the motivation of your owners and why they started the company can be a huge, you know, we call it a selling point. It's but again, your prospect can't buy owners. So it's building value, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's something you can build value in and knowing why they started the company. Some, most entrepreneurs, they get started to make money, to be free, to have their own time freedom, to be in control. But I think a lot of business owners in the network marketing space to take on the mantle of building such a big business that, that they plan to build, owners get started in network marketing most often, so often, for more reasons than just making money to really make a difference, make an impact. You know, they find this product that's going to impact lives and, or they, they, they have this desire to impact lives. And so, you know, knowing the motivation of those owners and why they started the company can help prospects know, Hey, look, yeah. these owners aren't just here to make money and, and take all the money. Like they're here for us. And so that can be a, a big, a big, you know, Thing selling, that, point. selling point. Priscilla's you know? saying this is the big reason why I made the switch to another company because my leader aligns with my values. Absolutely. So leadership, and we'll talk about more about uplines and identifying, you know, leadership. But upline is similar to, to ownership. It's like you're identifying yourself, you know, aligning yourself with the leaders and the leaders, the owners. Why the leaders that you're working with got involved and got started, and why the owners got involved, you know, right. got started and and their motivation, the leaders that you're working with, their motivation. So all these things are related for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So are you ready to write the recipe? So yeah, so get the recipe. Yeah. <laughs> the recipe formula? Yeah, a formula. Uh, did you want to wrap up something? No, this or should is you. we get into it? Yeah, yeah. Tell them all the right, formula. Let's go. Let's the building value so, formula. So so yeah, so the perfect ownership formula, if you're if you're taking notes, it is ready, it is. PV, and I'll let you know what that is. PV plus it's not personal volume. It's not personal. It's not product volume. <laughs> not product volume. PV by hey, we're in network marketing, so we love to oh, be we, we love volume. everything to be like PVs and whatever, right? <laughs> uh, so PV uh, plus BE, be like uh, Bob. BE plus M equals DNA. All yeah, right. Yeah. So. PV plus BE plus M equals DNA. So let's talk about that for a minute. So PV stands for personal values. The personal values of the ownership team uh, is where you want to build value, right? Plus you want to build value in the BE, in the business experience of the ownership team. Yep. Sometimes it's one owner, sometimes it's an ownership team, right? So, yep. um, and depending on the company you're in. More and, to talk about, right, great. Right, yeah. exactly. Plus you have, M stands for motivation. So PV plus, so personal values plus business experience plus motivation equals the DNA yeah. 
of the organization. It's literally the DNA of the company. The chromosomes. The chromosomes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like That's the imprint that the ownership team imprints onto the culture of the organization. Yeah. All right. So what is this DNA? This DNA shows up in the culture yeah. of, of the whole organization and it shows up directly in your daily experience and interaction and your personal experience experience with the company. Yeah. All right. And so uh, not only that, not only shows up in your daily activities and experience with the company, but it also shapes the genetic code of your success future success in the business period, yeah. okay? So when you're building value in the owners, the PV and the BE and the motivation, the M, when you're doing that to your prospects, you're inviting them, you're not selling them. Right. We call them selling points, but they're, you're not they're, But they're not feeling sold. So you can't say it's selling and they right. can't say it's selling. You're inviting them, you're in, it's enrolling, right? It's, yeah. That's why there's a different word for it. It's building value, it's not sales, right? So you're inviting your prospects to align themselves, just like Priscilla felt aligned with the leader she mentioned. Yeah. You're inviting them to align themselves with the values uh, and the vision of the ownership team. Right. And that builds belief, that builds excitement, and it also enrolls people into loyalty and long-term right. vision and commitment into the company. Because at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest and let's just lay it out flat. People follow people, they don't follow products. That's huge, right? I mean, if someone joins the business just because of the compensation plan, mm -hmm. Then if they make money, they stay. If they're not making as much money as they thought they would, they leave. I mean, if it's just money, right? right. If they if they find something else that has a better compensation plan, they leave because it's just about the money. If they join just because of the products, if the product they get started because they want they're excited about the product, but if it doesn't have as much impact on them as they thought, then they're 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 out. Or they find another product that they like, or it's more relevant, or they have a different health issue at a different time or something. I mean, the products they can go to a different company. But when they're in the, when people are enrolled into the vision and the values of the company, yep. that you're going to have a lot more retention and stickiness, and people will stick around longer, which will allow them to start to reap the rewards and benefits and see the experience, the the benefits that that success starts to have in the business by being around. You got to be around long enough to experience it. And most people don't just have an explosion of success because we live in a microwave society yeah, yeah. where people want instant success yep. and no, you know, and, and we all know it deep down in our hearts, even if we don't want to admit it, we got to work at it. Yeah. Right. You got to put in the effort to reap the rewards. So, so that's it. If you can get your people to stick around longer, that's better. And the more, and the more buy-in they have, right the longer they're going to stay in. And sometimes it takes going to the big event where people, maybe they get started because of the product or the comp plan. Then they finally go to the big event and then they get the, really the vision and the buy-in they were, you know, the long-term vision. But if you can do that earlier in the prospecting, you know, in the peaking process and get that buy-in early, you know, they don't have to go to travel across the country to get their team to, you know, get your team locked in and get them excited about a long-term commitment. How you know? much value are you guys getting from this training today? I want to see the comments. I want to see if you had a mind blowing like moment, if things are making sense, if things are clicking, if, if, if you've all of a sudden, you know, saw something in a new light, you kind of knew, but never thought in it in this way, let us know. We want to, we want to be part of your, you know, thinking process and, and growth process. And, you know, it's light bulb moments. Light bulb we want to be a, whole, a part of light bulb moments because this is some, this is maybe seems like simple or subtle, but if you can, if, if you approach people with this type of attitude in your prospecting and team building philosophy, yeah. you know, you're, you're not selling anymore. You're speaking at a higher level, you're prospecting at a higher level and you're going to attract higher level people. You're not, you, you, you're just elevating your game. So as I wrap this up, I got some couple last couple notes. If you're, if you're looking for a company, right? Well, you're wanting you're wanting to assess the owner's personal, you know, personal values and business experience to reveal if it's a company you want to join, right? right? If you find yourself in that situation sometime, but in your recruiting process, right? You're locked in, you're excited about your company and you want to go build it. Well, as you were go out there and prospect and do recruiting, right? If you can be sharing these things with your prospects, if you can be sharing the personal you know, values and the business experience and the motivation behind 
why the owners of your company are doing what they're doing, you're going to have a whole lot more recruiting success and retention and, and, and you're going to feel a lot less salesy and you're just going to be speaking a higher level. So, you know, revealing, revealing the building, building value, revealing, you know, revealing these types of things to your prospect when maybe they're not even asking about it. Yeah. They're wanting to know about the products and you're like, oh, I'm going to get to that. But first, let me tell you what matters the most, why I'm doing this. Right. right. So you'll get to that. But revealing this to them when they're maybe not even asking, for, they don't know to ask for it. Your prospects don't know to ask mm -hmm. for it, maybe. Mm -hmm. But you can bring them up to that level. So these are the three three good questions you can ask if you're already in a company wanting to learn these things. Yeah. And before you you you, you jump into that, I just want to say Joy sure. said that she kind of knew this, but thank you for the formula and the clarity. Yeah. Ladies, look, guys, absolutely. Because a lot of the times we do things like on autopilot yeah. and we don't know why we're doing it uh, uh, or the impact of what we're doing and how it can create the ripple effect or the, the result that we're looking for. So just having now entering conversations with that clarity in mind, uh, it just shifts you from being on autopilot to, to, uh, you know, self, you know, from autopilot to kind of, uh, the, the pilot, you know, the actual pilot gearing the conversation, having absolute control over the conversation. Yeah, I think because I think so many network marketers are kind of tunnel vision on like selling the product and I love my product and I want to promote my product. And we have this group that hopefully we can everyone can be but trying each other's products and getting more customers. But I think we want to be focused on like, why would someone want to build a business with me and be involved in having a home based business and working with this company when there's so many other opportunities out there? And why would they want to align themselves right. with me and my vision and the owner's vision and go on this journey with us when there's so many other products and so many other offers. And by saying me, we mean you, right? Yeah. yeah like you're, that's <laughs> like, what you should be like thinking. You, you're asking like yourself. You're asking yourself, why would someone want to go on this journey and owning and building a business with me? Right. Cause that's a different conversation than why would someone want to buy my product? Right. We're looking for customers. Why would someone want to buy my product, try my service versus why would someone want to build a home-based business and go through right. the process of, you know, learning and growing, becoming an entrepreneur? So these are three great questions to ask in a company so that you can, so you can build value in the owners as you prospect, or they're great questions to ask as you're evaluating a company. Either way is number one, what's their story? The owners, right? Of the, of the company I'm evaluating or the company I'm in, what's their personal story? Right. And it's a, and it's a question that it's, it doesn't get asked. I think most people, it's like, what's the product? How much do I make for selling it are kind of the, the straightforward questions most people have, but what's the owner's story? Let's talk about that. You know what I mean? And the second question is what's their experience? What's their mm -hmm. experience in business and in network marketing and what's their history in business, mm -hmm. right? What, what qualifies them to, 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 to run, lead. to lead the company that I'm going to invest my heart and my energy and my time into. Right. So mm -hmm. what's their experience? And then why did they start it? Why did they start it? Just like you have your own reason why you stick with it and you keep going and you're on this live and you're talking about it and you're doing it. Why you right. stick with it? Why are the owners doing it? Right. And that's something you can get behind and something you can build value in. So those are three great questions. What's their story? What's their experience? And why are they doing it? You know, why did they start it? Are three, three questions that will help you get some answers so you can build value and you can have I mean, you can have an hour long convert. You don't want to. It's a long conversation, but you can get good at building value in these things. Spend five minutes. Yeah, you're having lunch. You're having a conversation with someone now more than selling. Right. You talk about the product for an hour. Someone's feeling really sold, like hard sold. They're like, ah, like, that's a lot of selling. But talking about the owners, I mean, you're having a conversation. It's not it's feeling like, wow, this time went by so fast. I'm getting excited about learning about your product. Right. Knowing that these owners are so awesome or have this incredible experience or they have this such a huge motivation and reason why they're starting, why they started this and on a mission and people get excited. Now they want to hear about your product and they're already in, they're mentally already in, they're bought in before you even got to it. And the compensation plan, the money will happen. I'm so excited about these owners and their mission. And I'm a, tell me about this product. I want to market it. And the, the compensation is like, we'll make money too. We don't worry about that. You know? And so, so, it's a different, it's maybe a, a reverse kind of a different way to approach prospecting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And ultimately you're sharing the story about owners, about other people. 
uh, which makes the whole recruiting process Number one, where you're not feeling salesy. Number two, where they're not feeling getting sold. <laughs> it's not about you and, anymore. And it's about something else outside of the both of you yeah. that you're building value in and it, inviting them and enrolling them into a vision. And uh, and uh, and ultimately, it's up to them if they, they feel aligned. But you, it is your job as a network marketer to do that job, <laughs> right? To build the value and uh, take them through that enrollment recruiting funnel process, which starts by building value in the owners. The, and the, the better whole, you do it, and the, yeah, you are, the, the, the more successful you'll be. Absolutely. And so, in, you know, in throughout this perfect pyramid series, we're going to unravel different parts of how you can build value in your recruiting process. So stay tuned. Actually, next episode is going to be amazing, I think. I was glancing over my notes, our notes that we have. Some stuff people know never even know about yeah. or think about things happening that and would, you wouldn't even believe happen behind the scenes and so we're in really companies. gonna unveil the veil and take you to a tour behind the scenes yeah. of things that happen that will drop your jaw your jaw yeah. and, and and roll your tongue out and you're like really yeah stuff that you wouldn't <laughs> even that people don't even realize or learn about that's happening at the higher levels until you get to the higher levels and you're like, this is what's happening. Oh my, I had no idea that this stuff happens. This is, this is what it's like. And you know, it's crazy. So some yeah. good stuff. So we're excited uh, to share that with you. So until then, uh, we'll see you uh, on in the group every single day. Keep posting, keep the engagement high. We want to get to know you and we'll see you on our next episode next Wednesday, same time, same place at 4 PM Pacific time. Love you guys. And Bye-bye. See you there.